Welcome to Calvary Conversations. My name is Raya, and today I'm going to do a podcast on Christmas. Yay! Well, today's not Christmas. Today would be the 21st, but if you guys are watching this on Christmas, Merry Christmas. And I always like to remind people that Christmas has Christ in it, so it's all about Jesus Christ. And we are so excited to be able to have our Christmas Eve service, which will be, if you guys are watching this on Tuesday, it'll be Friday, December 24th, Christmas Eve at 6 p.m. So make sure to join us here at Cabrera Valley. Morgan will be teaching and we'll do Christmas carols. Morgan will be giving a Christmas message and the kids will be doing a Christmas play and singing. So super excited for that. But today it's going to be a little different of a podcast. We're not doing an interview and we're not, um, my dad's not here with me or Morgan, but I will be answering your guys' questions that you guys gave us on Instagram. So I'll be answering those. And also I'll be talking about um, the Christmas story where that's found in the Bible. I'll be talking about Santa Claus and about St. Nicholas and where that came. I'll be talking about the candy cane story. And I'll also give you one of my favorite Christmas songs and albums. And then we'll talk about um, some resources and things I have of like good Christmas ideas, like gifts and stuff and traditions that my family does. So things like that. So it's going to be a fun time. So make sure to get your cozy Christmas mug. This is our Calvary or Valley mug and a cozy blanket or pillow like this one. Sorry, just bumped the mic. Oops. And snuggle up. So um, the first question that we got was, how do I pray for others? So that one um, is not with Christmas, but this is a perfect season to pray for others and intercede because you guys are going to be around family and friends and sometimes people you don't really get along with. So I always encourage people that the best way to handle people like that, um, family members that aren't saved, maybe they don't agree with you politically or they're just new age or they just don't really believe in Jesus and want to submit to him and make him a savior and Lord, but you can pray for them. And I always encourage everyone to, when you're praying for someone, not to take all the load and burden of what is going on in their life, because that can be overwhelming, but to make sure that when you're praying for someone, to just really just give them to God and say, Lord, you know what's going on in their life. And just pray that John 17, that they will be one just as God and Jesus, right? That they were one. So to just pray that they'll be one with Christ and to know him more and yeah and during the season you can make him known that's the whole point of this season jesus is the reason for the season and we get to proclaim the good news of what jesus did on the cross for us so that's why i'm excited to share the candy cane story and my favorite song which I'll give you a sneak peek it's go tell it on the mountain but anyway so that's a good way just how to pray for others is just praying for them um just in a way of humility, not in a way of just being upset and bitter, but pray that the Lord softens your heart towards them. And I know it's a difficult season, but I know that whatever is going on in your life, um, the best thing you can do for your family and friends is to pray for them, not to argue with them or try to reason with them. It doesn't work. The only one who can save someone is the Holy Spirit. By the power of the Holy Spirit and Jesus, we can't save anyone. So just encourage you to intercede for your family members and friends. But that was a good question. I don't know if I answered it really well, but thank you for who gave that question. Also, it kind of goes with that, but someone asked, how have you developed a consistent prayer life? Um, I'm going to be honest here. My prayer life isn't always the best and that is something that makes me really sad and it shows how prideful I am thinking we were just talking with the women on Thursday morning study. It was our last study in the book of Colossians and then next year in the beginning of the year we're going to do the book of Hosea. So I'm super excited for that. So sorry, this is a side thing. But if any ladies want to join us for that, that's on Thursday mornings at 1030 a.m. in the church foyer in the foyer. Um, so you guys can join us and we're going to go through the book of Hosea. I know there's a new movie coming out and there was a book called Redeeming Love, but the new movie is like very sensual and not good. So I don't encourage you guys to watch it. I mean, I've only heard about the trailers. I haven't even seen that because I heard it wasn't good, but um, we're going to go through the real thing, the book of Hosea. So Miss Dwayne, Miss Ariel is going to help us with that. And I'm excited to go through that book. Um, but anyway, I just realized 
how prideful I am. Like, yeah, us women were talking about the song that are sung at funerals and stuff is, I did it my way, which is sad because I think that's Frank Sinatra, but he's Italian. And I think my dad's dad played that. They played that at his funeral, but it just shows that that's usually what we do in life. We are just going to push through it, plow through and do it our way. But we need to realize that we can do nothing apart from Christ. We are so weak and that's why we need to pray. We don't pray so that we can like, like rubbing like Buddha's belly. Like we're telling Jesus being our errand boy, do this, do that. But so that God will change us and that we will get into his will. And so that his desires for us, that's what we will desire is the things that he desires for us, not our desires to come to fruition. So hopefully um, that helps you. I know that it's really easy for us to um, whenever we pray to kind of give like a laundry list, which isn't bad, but to just be more thankful. I know some people have done the thing where it's um, acts, adoration, confession, thanksgiving, and supplication. Um, you can go through the Lord's Prayer. You can also just cry out to God and kind of like if you would vent to a best friend or family member, vent to God. He already knows what's going on, so might as well just cry out to him, but to pray without ceasing like the Bible says. So just talk to him. Maybe turn the music off in your car, even though you like to listen to Christmas carols, and I do too, and Christmas songs, but turn off the music and just start talking to God. And another thing for your prayer life and that I've realized recently is the reason why I struggle with talking to God, like I said, is the pride and thinking I can do it in my own strength. But I also think that we talk to people too much so that we almost feel like we don't need to talk to God. But I encourage you, like the verse says in James, be quick to listen, slow to speak. I think it's James one nine James one nineteen. Quick to listen, slow to speak, and slow to become angry. Be quick to listen to God and his voice. Don't just be praying and not hearing him speak to you. Another thing I encourage you guys to do is pray while you're reading the word of God. So like open up the Proverbs of the day, the day. So today is the 16th. So Proverbs 16. And then just start praying that. Like, Lord, help me to be a woman who fears you help me to um, be someone who does not slander or gossip and just pray while you're reading the word of God. That's really powerful. And you see that in the Psalms when King David, he's just crying out to the Lord. So you can pray while reading the Bible. Um, yeah, I hope that answered your question, but there's so many things um, with prayer, but just to know that don't feel like well, someone else's prayer life's better, but also know to pray desperate prayers, a prayer that is just on fire, knowing that God can do all things and he can um, answer your prayer, but also ultimately he's just wanting to change you to have his desires in his heart, which is so beautiful. Um, favorite Christmas song. Okay, so this is what I was talking about. My favorite Christmas song is Go Tell It on the Mountain. I remember as a kid, we would sing it. Um in the kids play and I was I was the one that was always like go tell it and I was like screaming it because that's what we need to do we need to go tell on the mountain which is one of my favorite songs because I love the mountains we live in Tucson Arizona and the mountains in Oro Valley are so beautiful and actually my name Mariah M-O-R-I-H um is after Mount Mariah so like a mountain but I love the mountains and I love that it says, go tell it on the mountain that Jesus Christ is born. And that's what we should be doing during this Christmas season. Not saying, oh my goodness, did I get the best gift for my family members? Are they going to like it? Am I going to get all the gifts I asked for? That's what I liked when I was a kid. It was all about the gifts and the, the candy canes and the food and all that and skiing. But now it's really just proclaiming the good news and how God has saved a wretch like me praise the lord and now we get to share that with others so i actually got this um it's like this hymn book by the daily grace co oops and you guys have seen me recommend it like so many times daily grace co if you're out there please sponsor me i bought all your books and um, bible studies so just saying um but i love this because it has hymns and this is volume one and then this one's volume two but it has hymns and explains the like 
um, behind the hymns, like the, the composers and the people who wrote the hymn. I especially love the story of like It Is Well and Amazing Grace. But anyway, this one, Go Tell It on the Mountain, there's a really good passage on this. Um, and it talks about Matthew 28, 19, which it says, go therefore, um, sorry, Matthew 28, 19. That's the one about our, sorry, I was blanking, but that is our, um, theme verse for our church. And our mission is Matthew 8, Matthew 28, 19 is to go therefore and make disciples of all nations or to make disciples. Yeah. Baptizing the name of the Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. I think I got another one mixed in with that one, but go make disciples. And then Luke 2.20 and Isaiah 52.7. So I encourage you guys to read that. Um, I don't have time to read this whole thing. I'm going to try to make this podcast short, but if you want, I can read this to you guys sometime or let any of you guys borrow this or take a picture of it. But this has, um, that's my favorite Christmas song. So yeah, that took a long time to say that. Anyway, go tell it on the mountain. And it says, what is your favorite Christmas tradition? Okay, so I feel like I've never had like the typical favorite Christmas tradition because I feel like we always do something different every year. But the main thing that my family, we always did is we obviously are in ministry. So we always had our like Christmas Eve service or our play. So I always loved being part of the plays and singing. I've been Mary a few times. I've been an angel. I think I've been a lamb. I think I've been a star. So I played all the roles. So that's been fun. I love doing the Christmas play growing up. I love singing Christmas carols. Um, I just love it being cozy. I, first of all, I hate the cold. That's why I'm a desert rat. That's why I live in Tucson and I will never leave by the grace and strength of God. But I love that you can get cozy and your warm fuzzy socks and leggings and long flannels and beanies. I love being cozy, but I hate the cold. So I, that's why I love Tucson. It's perfect. But my favorite Christmas, Christmas, Christmas tradition is I love going up when we would go to Flagstaff or White Mountains or Jackson Hole, Wyoming and go in the snow because we don't see the snow a lot. I love sledding, even though I've almost broken my tailbone probably three times. Um, I also love just being able to, we would like get like Martinelli's and it just be really cozy. Um, I just love that feeling with my family. Trinity makes really good um, Christmas cookies, but healthy. So shout out to Trin over there. And I love watching Christmas movies. I love It's a Wonderful Life, um, White Christmas, Miracle. Is it Miracle on 34th Street, Trin? Yeah, but I like the old school ones. Also like Elf and the Funny Ones, um, Christmas Story and things like that. But Christmas movies. But I think the main thing I love doing with our family is, yeah, I love going to the snow and going skiing. Um, Trinity's an amazing skier, everyone. She's only gone a few times, but she kills it on the slopes. But I love skiing and just being with my family and laughing. And me and my dad have had really good conversations just going up the ski hill. And we always goof around and have fun. And no one's gotten hurt that bad. So that's been good. But I love skiing with my family and it being cozy in the snow. So, yeah. Um... And then the other question is, where is the Christmas story in the Bible? So the two places that I mainly go to are Matthew chapters one and two and Luke chapters one and two. So that's easy to remember. But actually, I'm doing a Bible plan right now, which I just started. Um, I'm really behind in it. It's not good. I should be on day 16 or 17, but I am only on day. I should be on day 17, but I think I'm only on day four. But it's basically, uh, it's called Pro... Professor Horner's Bible reading system. You guys can find that on the one year Bible, but I was able to read Matthew 1, 2, and 3, and Matthew 4. So it's like you read Matthew 1 the first day, then Genesis 1, then Romans 1, then 1 Thessalonians 1, Job 1, Psalm 1, Proverbs 1, Joshua 1, Isaiah 1, Acts 1, and you just do it like that, and it just keeps adding it. So you read the Bible like maybe around two times a year but you just read through it. You're not like studying it, but you're just reading the word. And I 
I love it. I mean, I've only done four days of it, but hopefully by the grace and strength of God, I will um, do this plan and I really enjoy it. And there's really the guy who created um, Professor Horner. He has an amazing testimony. And one day, hopefully we get him on the podcast. I think he was one of Mireya's professors at Masters, but he has an amazing testimony. And they were saying the other night, if God can save him, he had done everything in the books, kind of like my dad's testimony, then God can save you and change you. Um, so yeah, that's where the Christmas story is. I would read it, but it'll be too long. So come to the Christmas Eve service and you'll hear that. Um, and then also another question is your favorite Christmas album, which is kind of with Christmas song, but album. Hmm. Okay. I grew up loving the Mariah Carey Christmas album. It's like the typical has the Oh Holy Night where she does the Oh Night Diva, that really high part. That was embarrassing. Maybe we should cut that out. But anyway, that part, which I cannot sing, but um, I love Oh Holy Night, Silent Night. Um, G I think it's Jesus, Jesus. Oh, what a wonderful child. I don't know what that one's called, but that one I love in the album. But um, I hated it growing up. Everyone, so, okay, this is a side note, but my name on my birth certificate is M-A-R-I-A-H, Mariah with an A. But when I was in elementary school, we switched my name to Moriah because that's what my parents always wanted to call me, but they called me, my birth certificate has an A on it. So if that's not confusing, I don't know what it is. So on the professional legal documents, I have to write an A. So anyway guys probably didn't know that about me but I hated being compared to Mariah Carey because she was so innocent before and then she got all crazy so yeah I don't like her now but I liked her album growing up um yeah I think that's the one I usually listen to but there's so many other good ones like Ren Collective Kevin and Rachel just went to that concert um they have a really good Christmas album and yeah so things like that um also another question was is santa claus real i think someone was joking there but if your kids are here i'm sorry but santa claus is not real but saint nicholas is um so i am actually going to read the story so this might take a little while but this will help me read because i'm actually not the best at reading in front of people because i always read silently to myself so ali lewis out there is an amazing reader readers are leaders but um saint nicholas the real story of a man who became santa claus so i'm just gonna read it kind of speed read and pass some parts but i love this because the first time i heard the real story of saint nicholas is when we were um my Oh, that's another Christmas, not Christmas tradition, but me and my family, we love every night reading Fox Book of the Martyrs and the stories of men and women. And it makes you grateful. I encourage you guys to get that and read that with your family because it really makes you so thankful for what we have in America and how blessed we are when other people are being persecuted and we have it really good. So to be thankful, even if you get a pair of socks or an avocado, to be thankful because there's other people who get nothing. So god has truly blessed us all right it says mary ugh, many see there you go many american children are looking forward to the arrival of santa claus on christmas eve bearing presents for good little boys and girls but most of those don't know celebrating that is a real man behind the story of santa claus and that real man was a christian persecuted because of his faith and actions wow so this is a little story i'm gonna skip this part but so St. Nicholas, Nicholas of Myra, was born in the 3rd century in the province called Lycia, which was a part of the Roman Empire. Today, ancient Lycia is a part of the country known we know as Turkey. Nicholas is believed to have died around 343 AD, wow, that was a long time ago, on December 6th, a date that is currently celebrated by many nations such as germany switzerland and the ne netherlands where it's called saint nicholas day and so i'll just do kind of skip through um hoping saint nicholas days were hoping they will get gifts and if they think they were good but if they were bad they receive a lump of coal so that's where it came from wow um 
Saint Nicholas or Nicholas was a man full of generosity and conviction. He was born to a wealth to wealthy parents who then died, left their fortune, and he chose to use his inheritance to help those in need. For example, one of the vignettes in the books is about three sisters who were saved from life on the streets. Their father was unable to arrange suitable marriages because he did not have enough money for their dowries. Therefore, the father was left with no choice but to sell them to a brothel, which is like prostitution. Upon hearing this, Nicholas secretly threw bags of gold into the girl's room. The father was elated, and after discovering his daughter's mysterious benefactor, um was sworn to secrecy by Nicholas that he would never tell anyone who had given him the gold. Nicholas is is recorded to have exposed the corruptness of government officials during a famine. He uncovered the government's deceitful actions of hoarding grain until the demanded force to higher prices. Later, Nicholas intervened in an execution of three innocent men, all falsely accused by same crooked governor. It is said that one of the prisoners was situated on the block for decapitation and Nicholas grabbed the sword from the executioner's hands. Wow. Setting all three men free, he he was praised for his bravery. Even though many have preserved the stories of Nicholas' acts of righteousness, few know of his sufferings for Christ. So he was persecuted. When the Roman Empire took power, he investigated a horrific persecution. Oh, sorry instigated not investigated this is embarrassing the lights are really bright um he instigated a horrific persecution of christians nicholas was imprisoned and physically tortured pinched with hot irons he for refusing to deny jesus as god one account mentions the prisons were so full of church leaders that that there was no room for actual criminals after the reign and persecution ended Nicholas would still face a fiercing a fierce testing of his faith this time within the church a preacher began promoting a heresy that Jesus was not God in the flesh Ar- um Arius the preacher um even went as far to set his false teaching to music by putting words to popular drinking songs. Constantine, the new leader of the Roman Empire, called together church leaders to discuss Arius' teachings and other issues dividing the church. This was called the Council of Nicaea. According to legends, as Arius was making his presentation, he began singing one of the blasphemous songs about Jesus. Unwilling to see this man's shame, Christ Nicholas stood, or St. Nicholas stood up and punched Arius in the mouth. So this guy was intense. Santa was intense. These, those in attendance were shocked. They were shooketh. Although they understood Nicholas's need to stand up for the behavior since Christ taught us um, to, to, sorry, this is so bad. I'm butchering this reading, but hopefully you guys understand this. Um, Those in attendance were shocked. Although they understood Nicholas's need to stand up for Christ's reputation, they did not believe that they could allow such behavior since Christ taught us to love our enemies and live a life of peace. Therefore, Nicholas was no longer allowed to serve as a bishop. It is noted that he later restored, he was restored to his position, but this action did not stop Nicholas from serving the sick and the needy. Sorry, this is the last paragraph. Okay. Those who are persecuted for following Christ today are much like Nicholas of Myra. They humbly serve their fellow countrymen and courageously stand for the Lord when faced with the choice of prison, with Christ or no prison without Christ. His story of boldness and generosity in the face of persecution from the government and conflict within the church is for everyone. By any Christian definition, Nicholas was indeed a saint. Saint Nicholas. May... Nicholas of Myra's life changed us to live generously by serving the poor and courageously standing for Christ in a culture that is increasingly hostile to him and his people. Amen. Sorry, that was really long and crazy, but I love that story of him, how he was persecuted, how he was burned with hot irons, that he stood up for men who were being killed almost decapitated that he helped these girls who are in prostitution and just so many things that he does or did sorry 
he passed away a long time ago, but he truly is a saint, Saint Nicholas, and that's where we get Santa Claus. So we do not celebrate Saint Santa Claus, we do not celebrate Saint Nick, but we're thankful for men like him, and we pray that we can be like Saint Nicholas. Um, but also I wanted to read you guys the story of the candy cane. The kids actually learned about this. Was it two weeks ago, Trin? I think it was two weeks ago. But they all had little candy canes and this is not a real candy cane because I didn't want to bring a re real sticky candy cane in the conference room. But I'm going to read the story of the candy cane. And this is a good story to give to others when you give them a candy cane and you can put the story on the back of it. It's a good witnessing tool. And who doesn't love candy canes? So here you go. The story of the candy cane. The candy cane was first introduced in the late 1880s by a candy maker in indiana he wanted to make a candy cane that could be a witness during the holiday season he began with a stick of pure white to show the virgin birth and the sinless nature of jesus christ the harness of the candy was to represent jesus as the solid rock the foundation of the church the firmness of the promise of god the white stripes of the candy cane represent the purity of Christ. The small red stripes symbolize the scourging of Jesus before he was hung on the cross. The large red stripes show that the blood of Jesus was shed for each of us on the cross. The shape of the candy cane represents the shepherd's staff because Jesus is the good shepherd. Amen. And if you flip the candy cane around, you will notice the letter J, which is first letter in Jesus's name. So I don't know if that's right or this is this right, Trin? Okay, um, J, which is the first letter in Jesus's name. It says, have a Merry Christmas and always remember that the reason for this season is Jesus and the candy cane. That's the reason for the season is Jesus and the candy cane is all about Jesus and you can witness using a candy cane isn't that amazing um but another thing that a lot of people ask is about trees and different things that people are like can you have a tree a Christmas tree we have Christmas trees all over but my dad did a very 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 good sermon that I will remember to this day about the Christmas tree and just talking about the representation of Jesus how he died on the tree um, the cross for our sins and that's what we remember we don't worship the tree and um, but he does a really good sermon on that which I will link in the description below and so he also does one on the real story of Santa Claus Saint Nick so it says what's the real story about Santa Claus he had one on that and his other one was um, is Jesus cool with Christmas so like trees and all that so i am going to link both of his sermons in the description below and i encourage you guys to watch those and they both have the children's christmas play that they did both years so that's super exciting as well um we'll also record our christmas play in the whole service if you guys can't make it on christmas eve so we'll have that on youtube so don't worry but that, that's this friday at 6 p.m and make sure to invite your family and friends because it's a good way to witness to them. If you feel like, oh, they don't listen to me, but maybe we can just be praying for them. That's why I have our Andrew cards that we have every year for Christmas and Easter because Andrew brought Peter, his brother, to Jesus. So we can be like an Andrew and invite our unsaved family members and friends to something like that because everyone's usually a Christer christmas and easter so i encourage you guys to do that and we'll be praying for your family and friends that they will come to know the lord and the true reason jesus is the reason for the season so the true meaning behind christmas um so i think that's it i think i've kind of gone too long i didn't want to go this long but yeah i am so excited for christmas and it is seriously one of my favorite holidays i mean i do love resurrection sunday and the resurrection of jesus and i love the fourth of july because i like it when it's hot and i like barbecue and swimming and ping pong so that's a side note but i encourage you guys not to get into the whole materialistic version of christmas it's not that you can't give gifts because it's a good example of being generous and giving others gifts but 
I encourage you guys not to give to get. Like if you give someone a gift and they don't give you something, don't worry about it because your reward's in heaven. Also, some of the best gifts that I would say that you could give anyone is definitely um, things like practical things like a Bible, if they don't have a Bible. Um, I have this ESV study Bible, which I really love. And there's also like mini Bibles that you can give people that they can carry in their purse or their backpack or just around with them. Also, again, for the ladies, Daily Grace Co., um, I encourage everyone, I get all their Bible studies. Right now, I think they're having a deal and they're like $5 or 10 or 15 at the most but this one is a bible study in the book of john this one is james and this one is roman so they're very very pretty and they're amazing gifts you can also get um like mugs and things from them but so daily craze co if you want to sponsor me sponsor me um yeah so <laughs> i know that was a random really crazy podcast but hopefully you guys realize that Jesus is the reason for the season. It's not about you. It's not about what you can get or if you're such a good giver because we can take pride in that. Like, oh, I give the best gifts. But the only thing that we want to um, give this Christmas season is the truth and the good news about Jesus Christ. That he saved a wretch like me and you and or you and I. And he loves us so much that he sent his one and only son, Jesus. John three sixteen. for God so loved the world that he gave his one and only son, that whoever believes in him will not perish, but have everlasting or eternal life. So that is the reason for this season. Again, join us this Friday for our Christmas Eve service and on Sunday. Um, and we will not have Wednesday night and Thursday um, Bible study until the new year. So I'll be in the book of Hosea and then for the Wednesday study we are in the book of Daniel. So thank you guys for joining us. And thank you so much to our sponsor. You guys have been amazing. We love mission heating and cooling. It's getting colder out there. So go check them out. They'll be in the description below. And if you guys would love to sponsor or like to sponsor Calvary Conversations, you guys um, can do that down below. With Click on the link that says support. You can give a one-time gift or um, a monthly gift. And if you become a sponsor, there's like different levels, then we can advertise your company, give you a free t-shirt and have you on our website, which we're launching a new website. It's going to be fresh in the new year for our church and the podcast. And the podcast is going to be new and different in the new year, 2022. Or, yeah, 2022. It's coming up soon. And I'm so excited for that. Um, but yes. Make sure you guys like and subscribe this video. If you're listening to us, um, go make sure to go to yeah, Ka to Calvary Valley's YouTube and check us out. And if you're on YouTube, go make sure to also go to Apple Podcasts or Spotify and you guys can listen to us. So if you don't want to like watch me or look at that, it sounded funny. He sees you when you're sleeping. I thought about how creepy that song was about Santa Claus. But Jesus Christ is coming to town. He's coming soon. We're going to have our podcast about the end times, another Q&A. Um, but Jesus Christ is coming to town. And he sees you when you're sleeping. He knows when you're awake. He knows if you've been bad or good. So be good, for goodness sake. But I've been getting so sidetracked in this podcast because I don't have my wingman, my dad, with me. Um, but yes, make sure to go to Apple Podcasts or Spotify and leave us a five-star review or follow us. You can also follow us on Instagram at Calvary Conversations. Check out our behind the scenes. Also there, I'll do like things where you can ask questions. And so that's the questions I was answering in this Q&A today. And yeah, the behind the scenes are always fun and really funny. Um... Also, if you'd like to send in any requests or ideas of guests, make sure you guys can comment down below or you can email me at calvaryov at calvaryov.org. And yeah, I think that's it. Thanks so much, guys. And Merry Christmas. Love you guys. Hey.